Welcome to episode 100. Woohoo! We made it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we are coming to you not live from <laughs> Palm Springs, mm -hmm. California. And maybe an episode, you can hear the crickets in the background. Yeah, maybe you will. I don't <laughs> know. Um, but we're coming to you in an episode after dark. Um, we are recording late at night, mm -hmm. hanging out at the RV park. And we wanted to talk about some of the things that are changing right now. Yeah. Because the reality is that within the world of business, things are starting to shift. Mm -hmm. And I would say shifts that have been anticipated for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. In some industries, they have hit already. But there are other industries that are just now experiencing some of that shift. Entrepreneurs shouldn't be stuck. It's unnecessary. It's frustrating. And unfortunately, it's where most of us end up landing. Your business should serve you, your dreams, and the future you set out to create. So let's destroy the myth that you have to work 60, 80, or 120 hours a week in order to make your dreams a reality. I'm Jay. And I'm India. This is the Marketing Breakthrough Podcast. Let's, Let's get, get to it. it. Going back to 2020, I remember having a conversation, and we've definitely talked about it before on the podcast, but this conversation was whatever happens, because we didn't know. There was so much uncertainty at the time. We didn't know if we were still going to be in business. We didn't know what was going to happen in the world. Everything had just been thrown into lockdown. And so I just remember saying, no matter what happens, we're going to go down swinging. Like we're going to try really, really hard to make an impact and help these businesses stay afloat. So any of the marketing clients that we had, we were going to work as hard as we could to help them survive, to keep going. And I remember that happening. And I remember seeing so many businesses that were starting to feel the struggle, but we also saw a lot of businesses grow like the bike industry, um, we saw them just like explode. Everybody went outside, lockdown happened, and then everyone was desperate to go outside. So anything that had to do with getting outside and riding bikes or going hiking or whatever, all of that, the outdoor world just exploded. And there was, you couldn't even buy a trailer if you wanted to. Um, I remember that year, Jay, you had to build up a bike instead of buying a bike because you couldn't even buy one if you wanted to. And so that industry exploded. But then there was also like, let's talk about the building industry. I mean, there was some serious slowdown right then is that at first, when it had first happened, a lot of people were just really panicking. And so nobody did anything for like two months and it was just this freeze. And then everyone, after having been home for so long, was just desperate to move. And it, it just exploded again. So we saw, you know, real estate just explode and go crazy. And we saw uh, the building industry, every people were wanting to build homes if they couldn't just go buy a home because the the housing market was nuts. I mean, we, we've seen so much fluctuation and that was just in 2020. And then you continued on to 2021 and, and 2022. And we, we felt like we saw the same. We saw a lot of this uptick, at least for, I would say even for our clients, there was this uptick in, in sales and in growth and everyone was doing really well. And, and they, it, I felt like the conversation was that they were surprised at how well their business was doing. And then as they continued, they kept saying, we, it wasn't our clients, but anytime we were trying to have conversations with people about marketing, they, what did they keep saying, Jay? Well, I think it was a conversation of, we don't need marketing. We, we have so many leads coming in right now. Mm -hmm. And the, to speak to your conversation about the growth is that a lot of this was, it was an artificial growth mm -hmm. um, in a lot of ways. And so, like, you referenced the, the bike the bike industry, which was a huge one, the um, bikes and the recreational vehicles, whether it be RVs or whatever, um, motorcycles, motorcycles yeah. four-wheelers. Mm -hmm. and, and so these, these saw, like you said, a massive uptick. And building had that little bit of a lull, and then and then it took off. Um, contractors all of a sudden took off. Mm -hmm. Their their businesses started to grow like crazy, and then there were a lot of businesses that started during that time. And it was interesting because people were. Well, you also said that real estate took off, and house prices went up everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so it, it was odd, though, because it wasn't necessarily a, a sustainable growth no, for every business. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it had to end at some point. And so during that, that period of time, there were a lot of conversations, like you said, that we were having where people would say, we don't need marketing. We have plenty of business coming in and uh, all of our business comes from word of mouth. Mm-hmm. One of the things we've said before is that word of mouth is 100 percent the greatest form of marketing. Yeah. The problem with it, it well, it's the most... Mm. Most successful form of marketing. Mo- most Let, successful? Yeah, let's say that. <laughs> yeah. You can't control no. when somebody talks about you. Mm-hmm. And so that's the biggest hang up. That's the biggest uh, drawback, downfall, uh, roadblock to using word of mouth as your form of marketing. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. It worked really well. Um, you know, I mean, it, it, it's worked well forever since people could talk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's worked really well um, because you have a relationship with somebody. You tell somebody else about that business mm-hmm. and then you move on and go from there. And, and somebody a lot of times will make that purchase based on the fact that, hey, you referred me mm-hmm. to them. I trust you. So you trust them. OK, we can do business anyway. This conversation of we don't need marketing. So what I said to a lot of those people, a lot of those conversations that we had um, was, well, you do. And right now you're in this interesting season where there's so much work coming in. And so my advice to you would be to spend money on marketing while you have the money and you don't need to market. Mm -hmm. Now, I should back up and say that uh, over the last couple of years, we have we've been able to uh, live a really cool, really ex- exciting life, and we have not pursued a whole lot of new work. We've hmm. been very selective with our clients. Yeah, um, we have not we have not dove in and gone after and, and chased down new work. Um, so we had a lot of conversations with people that weren't even looking into working with us, but we would naturally, a lot of conversations that we have morph into that of marketing because <laughs> that's what we're in. And that's what we would say is, well, yeah, you don't need marketing now, but you might want to think ahead towards the future when you do. I really believe that this idea comes from that mindset that marketing is like a 30 day response time. Like if you put out a social media post, you think that there's this instant gratification. You you think that there's just going to be a response right away. And that's not true. Um, you can get some sort of what? likes or comments. Yeah. <laughs> you can get likes or comments quickly because that is how social media is designed right but the problem is is that does not equal sales and people not in the marketing industry because it is not their profession so they don't know this they don't know and it requires some education and so as we're we're talking about this it's important to remember that marketing will always and forever be a long-term play and we'll say that over and over again. It's a long-term play. So when you are th- you're marketing, you're thinking about this social media post, or you're thinking about an email, or you're laying the groundwork to collect subscribers, or, or whatever it is that you're trying to do, when you're doing that, you're going to s- naturally think, hey, this is going to impact my sales, my bottom line uh, this month or in the next three months. But it won't. The work that you're doing today will likely at best impact your business six months, a year, two years, five years from now, could even be longer depending. But we have never found success working with a client in less than six months. And I say that, I don't know, we've had success before, so I can't just make it a blanket statement, but on average, when people talk to us and they say, okay, I wanna do some marketing, can we just do a little bit for like a three month period of time? And I automatically say, no, (laughs) no, because, three months isn't going to make a difference. Not really. 
And we need at least six months or at least nine months to truly make an impact. And so that's why we encourage people to recognize that marketing is that long-term play. That's the reason that we shifted our business over to the 12-month blueprint, the 12-month roadmap model where we were able to create that, that roadmap for you to walk through with your business. We were able to work with clients and then spend 12 months of time in that coaching process mm-hmm. of walking them through, holding them accountable, encouraging them in order to make those things happen. And we have had people come to us, like you said, um, come to us and say, okay, basically we need sales tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And the response is, okay, yeah, that's, that's not really us. So there are people that can, that promise that can, that can deliver that. Um, you can run some I haven't ads. met them though. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know that they can deliver that, but I, I mean, that's their I claim. I would love to shake their hand. And I a mean, lot of times they, me. they have that guarantee. Um, mm-hmm. I've never been willing to make that guarantee because I don't guarantee it. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, that's, a, that's a bold move. And so you can run ads and people, I have ads managers that I have on, um, on my quick contact list of people that I want to get a hold of if I have somebody wanting to run ads. Ads can be f- phenomenal. Um, but marketing is a long-term play because mm-hmm. even once you get some of those sales in, then you still have to back that up with some authenticity and some long-term play marketing. So I was having a conversation with somebody and actually before we dive into that, I do want to say that if you go back to, there's two episodes I wanted to mention is one is called set and forget. Mm -hmm. Um, that episode, uh, it, it took off. It had more downloads than any other episode. And I think it's because everybody wants to set and forget their marketing. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Which is funny because we talk about that in the episode. Let me tell you, it's a little baby title. Yeah. Um, uh, (laughs) uh, you can't set and forget your marketing because Mm -hmm. things, the world's always changing. The other episode is episode one. There were two episodes recorded with a friend of mine. His name's Adam McCoy and he owns tree lines Northwest. And he, um, it was in episode one where he talks about his social media following. And so India was talking about how likes and comments don't turn into sales. Um, and for the most part, that's 100% true. And Adam is a great example of that. He was sitting like right around 10,000 followers or something. And then he was continuously posting reels and then seemingly overnight and relatively, it was, I don't know what over the course of two weeks or Mm -hmm. four weeks or something, he went from 10,000 followers to 120 ish thousand followers. He's sitting above and beyond that now. But, um, it was interesting because he asks the question in the episode of, do you want to know how many sales I've gotten as a result of those 120,000 followers or 110,000 new followers? None. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) man, Man, we have been trained that, that social media is like the end all be all mm-hmm. of marketing and social media started coming out. And then all of a sudden, like people were s- marketing experts because they had a Facebook account and they had access to Instagram. All that. Anyway, there's a lot to that. Um, but what I wanted to get in. So the story that I started to tell before I, I had a, brief rabbit trail and tangent was that of a conversation that I had recently where I was talking to somebody. He was one of these people that said, I don't need marketing. Mm -hmm. Back in what? 2020, 2021, something like that. Yeah. Maybe even into 22, like Mm -hmm. beginning of 22. And we had conversations and I've known him for a while. And so we were having conversations about it. Um, during those years and every time he, oh man, I think I, I think he pushed me off as like how wrong I was. People don't need marketing. Nobody needs help with that. Jay, we have word of mouth. We've got more work than we can handle. At one point he said, if you can help me to reduce the number of leads I'm getting, that would be amazing. Yeah, he and did I, say that. <laughs> and, and my response was, well, if you really want to, we can do that. I can, I mean, there are ways to do that. Um, and to more strategically place those leads in, if you've got too many leads, you can absolutely um, reposition them mm-hmm. and, and set them up for a, for a future time um, so that you're ready when your slow season comes. Anyway, this recent conversation, 
is where he was asking me about marketing, which was funny. And I was, I was talking to him, having a conversation, and, and he said, yeah, we just – numbers are down for January. And I said, okay, like what kind of down? And it was sitting like right around 25% of what January typically comes in at. And I was, and I was thinking, oh, okay, so significantly down. And I said, well, here are some things that you would probably want to address via marketing channels. And what are you doing here? And he like kind of looked up and yep. And, <laughs> and uh, yep, as a, a confirmation that he heard me, but yep more in the way of well, i'm not doing nothing's that nothing's happening yeah and i said okay <laughs> what about what about b yep <laughs> okay and then you might want to look at c yep and he knew that what i was telling him needed to be done he wasn't doing any of it nobody was doing that and i said okay who do you have handling that yep <laughs> and it made me laugh it was it was it was entertaining and I said, okay, well, here's some things that you would want to do in order to address that. And his response was, it's just tough right now because there's not money in the budget in order to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And I will qualify this by saying it was nearing the end of the conversation anyway. And he's a friend. And, I feel like that's important to and say. And he's a friend. Yeah. And I said, man only someone had told you to work on your marketing when you had the budget before you needed the leads that would have been helpful and he looked at me he rolled his eyes he got in his truck and he drove away <laughs> which was perfect i just want to say because that sounds really intense too it was so perfectly timed like him so it, it was great it was all oh, it wasn't all offensive in, in any way yeah all I good fun but i love that because First off, anybody loves an I told you so moment because that's just great. But it wasn't because, I mean, I, it sucks. Like, I don't want to be the one that says, well, you should have done this. But it's something, this is why we have to educate. This is why we have to talk about it. Because people assume that marketing is right now. Something that I want to touch in on is that look at the, look at how the real estate industry went. Think it, put yourself in the shoes of an agent. Now, if you're an, a real estate agent and 2020 happens and all of a sudden you ha are selling homes like crazy, you are going, you're listing them, you are dealing with so many people trying to buy houses, there's all these battles trying to get these homes and you are just making a bunch of money. You're just raking it in. And now your family can afford that extra vehicle. Now your family can go on all these other vacations. Now you're able to pay off stuff. And it's working really well. Then you continue on into 2021 and 2022, and it's nearly the same. Maybe not as intense, but somewhat similar. And you get to that point where now it's been from year to year, and it's really easy to look back at your previous fiscal year, as most businesses do, and assume that it's going to continue that way and it's going to stay the same. Now, yes, there is some news reports and you know, a little bit of negative commentary here and there that suggested that there was going to be a change in the housing market. But most of the time when you're bringing in this money, there are moments where you think, oh, I can take on this added expense. And so mo more often than not, especially in the United States, people live above their means. And this just happens consistently. So when you put all of these things together and you add in the fact that most of these agents r would respond with, I don't need to market myself. I've got so much business coming in. It doesn't even matter. Once you put all that together in this giant stew pot, right, then comes this huge shift and rates start going up. The Fed changes things. Business slows down a ton and agents are starting to struggle. And this isn't just something that's happening in the real estate world. It's happening in plenty of businesses. Now, we saw with COVID, we saw restaurants struggling, um, but we're not really talking about that right now. We're talking about the people who had this success so much that they only relied on word of mouth marketing, and then they have this huge crash and they're really struggling. And so we want to focus on the importance of marketing when you don't quote unquote need it. You absolutely do need it, but you're going to need it years from now or months from now. 
And that's what's important. I mean, the adage of when's the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago, when's the <laughs> second best time is right now. And th that's exactly how you have to look at your marketing. And so maybe you do need sales right now and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Start marketing now because you can't keep putting it off in the anticipation of like, well, I'll just keep, I'll try to ride it out. Like you may have another word of mouth boom which is great. Um, we mentioned the bike industry. The bike industry took off, had so many sales, and then what happened was everything slowed down because all the orders caught up. The manufacturers had placed these orders. The orders caught up, and then now the, the demand slowed, and so then manufacturers for the last two, two and a half years have been sitting on warehouses stacked full of bikes mm -hmm. you you have real estate agents that aren't um creating uh, aren't selling houses they're not having to create listings to the extent that they were um you don't have as many people fighting and bidding on homes and you have a lot of industries that have experienced a bit of that slowdown and mm -hmm. so earlier we mentioned uh that friend of ours that that i had the conversation with and those are trades, um, subcontractors that are, their work is slowing down. Mm -hmm. And it's not because, I mean, I was going to say it's not because they're, they did anything wrong. Maybe they made some mistakes in not doing, um, in not planning ahead with their marketing. Uh, but it wasn't because they did bad work. It was just because right now people are holding on to their money. And if, if we're honest, we're in an election year too and everything's tends to slow down mm -hmm. there as well. And so um, positioning yourself so that your marketing is uh, ready and prepared for that. Um, but making sure that you are being proactive. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you, you could equate it to um, going, getting more exercise. You know, it's like what you were saying, the best time to start is now. I mean, if you just keep putting it off more and more and more, then you're just going to slow yourself down. It's just going to either get worse or it's not going to happen. And so the best time to start is today. I think that um, something that can be a part of this is desperation and panic. And if you're in a situation and your business has experienced a really big slowdown, um, uh, usually the biggest slowdown in, at least in the United States is going to be in January and February. A lot of people stop spending money because they just came off of Christmas and overspending. So then they're kind of making up for it in those seasons. You'll see a little bit in the travel industry explode because people want to go on vacation during the winter. But most of the time, that's when the struggle really builds. And so because of that, you'll have a lot of businesses and a lot of entrepreneurs, they're kind of sitting at home or sitting in their office, twiddling their thumbs, just worrying, stewing over the fact that the phone isn't ringing or that they're not getting those leads. And because of that, then you can have this really bad habit of throwing out social media posts that kind of communicate this desperation. And so we've talked about this before as well, but I wanted to touch in on it is that no one wants to jump on to a sinking ship. And that was something that Jay had said many years ago. I think you got it out of a book, but the best part is, is that when you are or I guess not the best part, but just the, the important takeaway is that when you are struggling, you have to be really careful that you, how you communicate, wanting to grow your business and wanting to gain leads or gain sales. Because if you communicate like, oh man, things are tough, send business my way. People don't want to jump onto that sinking ship. It sounds desperate. It sounds like it's going to lead to shoddy work and mm -hmm. you have to be really cautious of that. So communicating the need or rather your desire for leads in a positive way is always going to help you have more success. And I think that, you know, if you're struggling with coming up with the right words, it's important to reach out to people who can help you with that. And that's, that's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. The analogy of jumping on a sinking ship is 
I always think it's a funny one. Um, if you if you think through the imagery of it, and there are a lot of uh, sayings and adages that we say as 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 a people um, that we don't necessarily think of the imagery of or think of what they mean. And that one always makes me chuckle a little bit. But the reality is that nobody would jump on. You know, you've got a hole in the bottom of of your boat, and I think I always think of the imagery of a rowboat and it's filling up with water and it's sinking and nobody's thinking, Oh, that looks like my best method of safety. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a great choice. I'm coming into the boat with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the same way, when you have businesses that are communicating that way and they're saying help work is work is really tough. Um, it's like, okay, but why weren't you floating? Why, why aren't you moving forward? Um, I don't What's really wrong wanna, with your boat? <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to jump in right now. Um, or rather, what did you do to the boat? And so, <laughs> yeah, things, things have shifted. Um, like I said, for the bike industry, it's been a couple of years um, that they've been dealing with this. Mm-hmm. For, for the trades, it, it kind of depends on what area you're in, but it's it's becoming more and more prominent across mm-hmm. the U.S. Um, I've talked to friends and contractors in a few different countries or a few different states in the United States right now, and 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 they're they're struggling. Their Januarys were low. Their Februarys were low. Uh, I talked to somebody recently who uh, it was another person in the trades and and just said. I don't have leads. I've had, I had five calls in January and it was another person that for the last two and a half, three years I have talked to and has said, man, I've got more work than I can handle. It's awesome. But when it dries up, it's unfortunate Mm -hmm. and it's really tough. And um, I've talked to, I've got friends that are uh, mortgage brokers and they've been in the same world of having, they've had so many leads because during that COVID season that India mentioned is that there were so many leads coming in that it, there just weren't enough brokers. There weren't enough real estate agents. There weren't enough people to serve the people and serve the need. And now there is not enough need for the people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, um, so that's, that's a shift and something that is happening. So I think bottom line the focus of this episode is like to be aware, Mm -hmm. to be proactive in what it is that you're doing and you're working on and you're trying to create. Um, Be concise in your communication. Make sure that it's clear. Make sure that your ideal customer or your ideal client knows exactly what you offer and they are hearing that message. And right now, maybe the biggest takeaway from this is that right now in a season where a shift has happened, is happening, will happen. If you can play offense instead of defense, Mm, it will set you apart. What I mean by that is that there are a lot of companies that will tighten the belt in order to make sure that things are, they're running running a much tighter ship. Now, I'm not advocating for running a business above your means, running your household above your means. Um, I'm not advocating for uh, just throwing away. But a lot of times, people will tighten up, and it's a great it's a great moment in time for businesses to uh, to bring things together and ensure that money is not being haphazardly spent. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there are a lot of businesses that will restrict almost all spending. It will get so tight that they're not spending money where they need to be spending it. They won't be spending money to advertise. They won't be uh, spending money to maybe sponsor different activities in the community and being in the community, Mm -hmm. um, being on display on, on uh, signage on, on, uh, you know, for soccer teams, like little things, places where you can give 
a realistically small amount of money in order to be present in multiple areas. Um, but there are a lot of times when people will pay, play defense to such an extent that they will tighten up all that spending and they will forget about some things that are truly important. This is where having that person comes in. Having someone like us to say, hey, this is where you're spending your marketing dollars. Let's make sure that we're spending them on the right things. Is now the time to be spending money on Facebook ads? Eh, I don't know. Is now the time to be putting up that banner at a soccer field or investing in this new software or this new camera equipment or, or whatever? It's important to have these conversations with people because it, the world consistently changes. There is always going to be a shift. And that is going to mean that whatever worked for your business two years ago, four years ago, last month may not work right now. And it's, it's okay to make those changes. It's okay to recognize that there's going to be something else that comes along and that maybe your marketing dollars should be placed there and not just your dollars, but also your time and energy and focus, making sure that you're not wasting that important thought energy on something that's just sucking away your mind hours. Um, whereas in, you could just be thinking about your business. You could be thinking about the next amount of growth that you want to seek after or your goals. I will say there are a lot of things that you can do marketing wise that are 100% free. Mm, they, I they, like that. They will take That's you good. some time. They will take you some effort and some energy. Um, but the majority of the time I will advocate away from people just spending money on running ads and things because a lot of times their ideal customer has shifted. It is morphed. Um, maybe it's not relevant anymore. And so instead of just spending those dollars in places where they're not going to get a return, there are ways that you can market for free and put in a little bit more effort and energy mm -hmm. and you can get a lot better ROI. And so I've, I've definitely saved people some money and stopped spend in a few different areas mm -hmm. quite a few times. I'll leave you with this tip because I think that it's important. It's times like these that it's, it's, a, sorry. Say that again. The whole thing? Yeah. I'll, I want to leave you with this tip because I think that it's important in times like these, in times of shift and change, or in times of that, oh, the desperation, right? In those moments, it is very valuable for you to get out into the world and stop staring at your computer, staring at the things when you are not able to do your work, when you're, you don't have leads coming in, you don't have a job to do, whether it's working with your hands or working with your brain, whatever it is that you do, get out and go introduce yourself to someone. Go meet a human being at a coffee shop. Go put yourself out there. That costs maybe the cost price of a coffee. I don't know. But the point is, is that when you put yourself in a networking opportunity, your voice is free. It costs nothing. You are your best marketer. And the more that you can share your story and your mission and your values and all the things that you want to do or that you are incredible at, do it. Because Facebook or Instagram or your website or any of those other, whether it's a digital thing, print material, any of it, it's never going to do as good of a job as you can. Marketing Breakthrough is a community of entrepreneurs with a vision of creating meaningful, sustainable businesses that allow freedom, fun, and adventure in their lives. Time is the only resource you can't get more of. So we believe in finding a way to achieve our entrepreneurial dreams with freedom in mind. We've designed this resource hub of tools, tricks, and techniques to grow your business and live the life that you set out to create.